This is the question I left you with. And it's a great question as questions go. Let's just rewind a little bit and catch people up so we know what's going on before we leap into the, the mystery of it. This was where we began, okay? Initial speed, we knew where the target was, and we went through, we worked out all our time equations, and then we worked out the firing angle to hit the target. In fact, we worked out the firing angles, plural, because there are two. Now, just as a point of interest, um, we ended up with this. You solve your quadratic, you trade your sec squared for a one plus tan squared, and you get to this point after you use the quadratic <laughs> formula, right? Now, the point of interest that I have for you is that I, I semi made up this question. I mean, there's, there's only so many projectile motion questions that you can um, conjure up, right? So I made up these numbers, and when I got to this point, I thought, well, predictably, you get something gross because I just made up the numbers. I didn't craft them any, with any care. Um, and to my surprise, you get some very, very, well, we got some very, very nice numbers at the end. I expected to get something awful with decimal places and so on. But they ended up being 15 and 75. Strange, okay? And then we thought, that's, that's kind of sus, isn't it? There's, um, there's, a, there's a relationship here, clearly. Um, you can see that. Here's my, um, actually I might color it in. There's my, my lower angle of projection, if you like. There's the 15 degrees. And to get the 75, because 15 and 75 are complements, right? I can put that other angle, well I didn't do the scale very well, but you get the idea. I can put the same 15 degrees up there. So if you like, it's like I'm aiming upwards 15 degrees, and then to hit the same target, I can go from the vertical and aim downwards 15 degrees, if you want to think about it that way, okay? Then we pose this question. We say, what happens if we raise the target? And we put it a kilometer in the air, maybe on top of a mountain or something like that, okay? Now again, you get down to this stage, and I think if my memory serves me, you get to this point. You get tan alpha being one or three. Is that right? I think that's right, yeah. Um, and so you think, oh, okay, again, I've got two angles. You've got an alpha one and an alpha two. But mysteriously, well, we all know what tan inverse of one is. It's 45 degrees, okay. And then you get something weird and awkward here. Can you give it to me to the nearest minute? It's 70, 71 and 34 minutes sounds right. Okay, good. So you look at that and you think, what's gone wrong? <laughs> we expected something nice and neat, some kind of relationship. And there is a relationship, it's just not exactly the same. Okay? So the question is, what is the relationship here and how can I take advantage of it in the future? Okay? Um, just to help you, I don't know if you ended up going further and doing this, but if you take these two scenarios and you answer the same questions we did over here, um, if you resolve the final impact angle and impact velocity, you end up seeing that this one, when you fire this, it has a horizontal velocity but no vertical velocity, right? So it's not, it's not hitting upward, it's not hitting downward, it's just hitting level, if you like. So stationary point for our equation of path, okay? So there's your 45 degrees. Uh, I'm actually not going to draw anything else yet. Uh, and then you've got your 71 degree angle, which is, oh, I don't know, something like this. There you go. And it hits either way. Okay. So the question was, what was the relationship? And I gave you a clue. Do you remember what was the clue I gave you? I, I drew in the hypotenuse, didn't I? Um, something like this. It was a, clearly, clearly it was a badly drawn hypotenuse because you're like, I thought it was a pretty wonky looking line. Now that was my clue, okay? Um, the question is, how does it relate? <coughs> hmm. All right, now to help you, I'll walk you through it and um, you tell me when the lights come on for you. Uh, this triangle here is well defined. I know what all the sides are and therefore I know what all the angles are, right? Uh, for instance, I've got this side here being a thousand, right? And this side over here being two thousand. So, can anyone tell me, what's that angle of elevation in the corner? What is the angle of elevation from the firing point to the target? How would I work it out? Let's call it theta. If that angle is theta, how do I work it out? I think if I say, I've got the opposite and the adjacent side here, right? So I can say tan theta is opposite on adjacent. That's a half, right? So therefore I get, you take tan inverse of both sides. Now, uh, a half, that's not an exact value, is it? I'm expecting something awkward, but that's okay. Let's just see what we get. 
What angle will it be? Someone gonna beat me there? 26? 26 and what? 34. Huh. That's suspicious. 26, 34. That's this angle in here. 26, 34. That makes me suspicious because I have another 34 minutes over here. In fact, if you want to go and have a look at tan inverse of 3 and look at all the trailing decimal places, right? And you compare them with all the trailing decimal places here, that doesn't seem coincidental. Okay. Knowing that angle now, does anyone want to make a suggestion as to what they think is going on? Can anyone see what's happening? Hmm. Hmm. You remember I drew in here um, my two 15 degree angles, if you like, that gave me those two firing angles, alpha one, alpha two, okay? I've got some green angles in here as well, okay? For instance, what's this angle? This is the difference between the actual firing angle, alpha one, right? And the angle of inclination. What is that? Hmm. It'd be um, alpha one minus theta, wouldn't it? which in this case is 45 degrees minus whatever that thing is. What's that? No, seriously, what is that? 18 something? 1826 by my reckoning, we've approximated, right? 1826 is that green angle. 1826. <laughs> Can you see where else 1826 is? It's in the same spot it was before, from the vertical. Can you see it right here? If you can't do the calculation in your head, that's okay. I'll show you. 18, 26. Because 90 degrees, that's the vertical, right? 90 degrees minus alpha 2, right? That's how far I'm inclined from the vertical. That's going to be, uh, what was it? 70, no, sorry, 90 degrees minus 71, 34, which again is 18, 26. Okay, so what conclusion do you draw? Why is it that these angles are not complementary? Okay, well you rightly saw that, well it's because I'm not on the horizontal anymore. But therefore, how are they related? How would you articulate that? How would you word it? Because I, I think we can come up with a sentence, right? That shows the relationship between these two angles and the relationship between these two angles is actually the same. Mm. I'll give you a clue. It's going to use the words equally inclined and it's going to use the word vertical and there's some other pieces that we need to put them all together hmm. I want you to try and write one down I'll give you 30 seconds or a minute see if you can phrase what you think is going on the relationship that you can see there see if you can articulate it okay. I, won't, I won't scrutinize you I'll give you my sentence um, I'm going to use these phrases what am I trying to relate together I'm trying to relate together these two guys, alpha one, alpha two, okay, in each case. I want to come up with a way of expressing their relationship so that it holds no matter which situation I'm looking at, okay? So being that the two things I'm connecting are alpha one and alpha two, they're the firing angles, aren't they? That's where I'm going to start. The firing angles, alpha one and alpha two, okay? Now, they're related, I'm gonna use this phrase, equally inclined. Right? What that means is, um, when you measure their angles from certain places, they'll be the same. Though the places that I measure the angles from will be different. Okay? So I'm going to say, the firing angles, alpha 1 and alpha 2, are equally inclined to... Now, what are the things I'm measuring from? Have a look at my... <coughs> excuse me, there's that frog. Have a look at my green angles there. Right? Where have I, or how have I paired them up? Okay? Well, obviously one is from the vertical, okay? In both cases, they're from the vertical, okay? But then the other one, it moves. Hmm. What, what's the same, what's the common line between this line, which is where this lower angle is, and this line, the one which I drew in a really wonky way before? What's the common thing between them? Uh, you could say it in a few ways, I suppose. Um, you could either say, you know, it's the angle of elevation here, uh, it kind of works, but it's a bit awkward when there is no elevation, right? I think probably the most succinct and unambiguous way to say it is, equally inclined to 
the line of sight. That's what that line is, isn't it? That's the target, literally, look, sorry, the origin, your cannon, gun, whatever, looking at the target, line of sight, okay? Erically inclined to the line of sight, uh, or from the line of sight, and the vertical, or the y-axis. Okay? So, in other words, what I'm really saying is that where, where um, you've got 90 degrees as your vertical, right? 90 degrees minus that is equal to that minus... Now, see this theta here, right? This theta, in the first case, was zero, right? And that's why, when I cover that, when it becomes zero, aha, I have complementary angles. See? 1575, okay? But if it's not zero, if you're off at an angle, right? This will account for it. There it is, right there. Okay, 2634. We had to work that out in the triangle before. Over here, you don't have to, because there is no triangle. Okay? So can you see that this equation, which represents this statement, holds whatever kind of situation you'll get. And you get this double solution kind of business um, in projectiles all the time when you have to find an angle to hit a certain target. Okay?